Erev Tov Chavrim, I'm Stephen Benun. You're watching Israeli News Live. Troubling news coming out today, this morning at 6 a.m. here on uh, November the 16th there. The Hill reporting Keystone Pipeline shut down after spilling 5,000 barrels of oil in South Dakota. I mean, after all, the Sioux Nation the tribal nation, the Native Americans that live in this region back in 2016, protesting with everything they had about the disaster this pipeline could be. And even calling out on President Trump to do something about it. We covered this several times there, standing with the Sioux Nation and their concerns over this pipeline going across uh, lands that would affect their water supply. And now we're talking about 5,000 barrels. Well, that's about 210,000 gallons of oil that has been spilled there uh, as a result of a leaky uh, pipe there that it seemed it took them this long to figure out they're gushing out water. They call it a leak. You know, you guys, I'm sure maybe years ago, I know back in the late 70s when I was a teenager, you know, you'd change your oil and you didn't have the fancy container to put it in. You were doing it yourself and, you know, you, you pull, pull out maybe a gallon and a half of oil from the engine and if you spilt a little bit, oh, maybe, you know, equivalency of a quart or something, trying to get it over to a container at an auto parts store. But before you ever got there, you spill some on the yard or whatever. What a mess that makes. Now that's just a little tiny fragment. Now here we have in South Dakota, 210,000 gallons of oil being spilled. And it's like, oh, okay, it's okay, we did it, you know? And, uh, and the Sioux Nation knew that something like this could possibly happen and what the damages that that would do to the environment as a result. It, I mean, I, I'm just really troubled by it. And of course, President Trump, you know, all for the sake of the economy, you gotta get this pipeline going, right? Well, I'm sure now you got a new thing for the economy now. Now we have cleanup, right? Oh, geez, it's just really terrible. I know some people, I, got, I caught a lot of flag for standing for the Sioux Nation over this, but you know, here, here it comes down to it. Everybody was like, oh, you know, it doesn't matter. They just want more money and that's why they're pressing for that. Well, look what we end up with now, uh, a disaster as a result of, of this pipeline. You know, and my thought was, it wasn't to say not to do the pipeline. It was to make sure that we take in environmental concerns, take in, into consideration the Sioux Nation uh, and their concerns for their water, uh, their, their natural habitat, the, where they get their drinking water from. Uh, and that should be not just for the Sioux Nation, but for any American, period, the, you know, the consequences for this. And I think that the rush to get the pipeline built is what made this pipeline unsafe. Uh, and that's where the trouble really comes down. If it had Perhaps if President Trump really had a pushed for making this safer and doing something about this, even if it was rerouting it, but also taking into consideration uh, a safer uh, pipeline, that would have been far better than the situation we got ourselves into. Uh, let's move on into other news as well, though, friends. Uh, we're back in the swing of things here. Uh, we've got, I think we got a little bit of echo here in the studio. We set up a new studio there. We've kind of been stuck in a place where I could hardly get no upload time. It'd take five, six hours because of the internet. Uh, and it's been really kind of kind of a bit of a tough situation. I uh, also want to thank you guys for those of you that have been praying for my wife, Yana, uh, who's going through a very uh, serious sickness there. And thank you for those that have been helping uh, so that we can get her the treatment that she needs. I want to thank you. I, it's kind of been mid-swing here, but thank you for your love and kindness to, to my wife there. Uh, Russia vetoes U.S. draft resolution on Syria chemical probe renewal. I, I am so glad to see that Russia did this, but I'm just wondering, when are they going to take and kick Russia out of the United Nations? You know, that may seem a bit much for me to say that, but I think it's only a matter of time. It's got to be, you know, because why? Everybody blames everything on Russia these days. I mean, Russia is involved in the elections. Russia does this. Russia causes this problem for Europe, that problem for the United States. Well, Russia was a problem in Syria. After all, General Wesley Clark did tell us that the United States was planning on taking down seven nations in five years, which didn't quite go as planned. But of course, Iraq did go down. Syria got targeted next. We know that Libya 
Uh, we see uh, Sudan also in a quagmire uh, with U.S. military troops being moved into there uh, and more troops just recently sent there. I believe 500 troops have been sent to Sudan. People might think, well, that's not that much. But believe me, it's always the internal strife. This is the way the, uh, the deep state does this now. It's not that we send our own troops in so much as we go in there and stir up the internal strife to topple the nation. Uh, that may not work with Iran, but don't worry. they got a plan for Iran, too. They've been working with the Saudis because they've been working with the Saudis for Syria and also uh, they were working with Qatar with Syria, Turkey with Syria. Uh, Turkey kind of, we don't know where Turkey stands anymore. But interesting thing is uh, when it comes to Syria though and all these chemical weapons that have been used on them, you know, we had Seymour Hersh, the, the uh, incredible British journalist that exposed the fact that the sarin gas actually come from Libya during the time of uh, what was that? Miss Clinton, who was Secretary of State at that time, made sure that Syrian gas kind of worked its way around. And we have Aaron Erdem to thank, the MP member of Turkey, who exposed the fact that that Syrian gas was uh, smuggled by ISIS with the help of Mr. Erdogan to get it into Syria to be able to use it against the population. Blame it on President Bashar al-Assad. Well, that one kind of got exposed, but they still keep blaming it on Assad anyway. And now they had a new one that came out. All the evidence that was uncovered by different specialists, not just Russian specialists, by other specialists as well, clearly shows that President Assad had nothing to do with gassing his people once again. In fact, those famous white helmets that got an Oscar for being actors uh, there in the United States there, well, you know, they didn't do such a great job on acting on that one there. They were taking and getting rid of the sarin gas off of these little children that were dying and everything with their bare hands. Well, sarin gas, one little drop will kill a grown man. So do you really think they were taking the sarin gas off or why didn't they flop over dead? Too many odd things going on. And of course, Russia's blamed for everything. We need to get somebody from RT on here, you know, because RT is being labeled uh, as a Russian propaganda machine for the state of Russia. And in fact, I have to tell you, I think RT is one of the best news sources that I see out there. Not to say that I don't, I, I agree with everything that RT is doing by no means, but the point is they are a heck of a lot better than some of the other choices we have in the United States propaganda machine. And no doubt every news organization has some twist of their own in what they believe and think, etc. Even with us, Israeli News Live, I have always been a staunch supporter of Israel. But one thing I have learned, and that is, though I love my people, though I love my country, I finally come to a place to where my only issue that I care about is telling what the truth is. And even when it comes to my own country, I'm not afraid to tell it like it is. As we brought out in our message the other day about Israel, that we should have been involved with the Syrian government joining up with President Bashar al-Assad, putting aside our differences there, going after ISIS, the common enemy there, defeating ISIS so that we would have a safer country. And then we wouldn't have all this nonsense about, well, Iran is getting too close to our borders. You know, it's not to say that the Iranian people are bad people at all. Even like Prime Minister Netanyahu said when he was sending in aid for the Red Cross there to help the Iranian victims of the earthquake disaster, which I really applaud President, Prime Minister Netanyahu for doing so. I did not like the fact that as he said that, he took the time also to take a jab at the government of Iran. Forget the government of Iran. You know, if you're doing something to help somebody, help them and then leave the rest of the po politics out of it. You know, the people were suffering in Iran as because of the earthquake as well as Iraq. And that should have been our main focus. No other political side of this. All right. But the thing is, is Iran would not be in Syria today helping President Bashar al-Assad defeat ISIS had Israel stepped up to the plate. Even if we used the Russians who we are allies with to use the Russians to be able to help defeat ISIS. Unless maybe because after, you know, during Obama's reign and uh, John McCain, and maybe we shouldn't blame it all on Obama either. Maybe it's the deep state in behind Obama that he only has to be the puppet to. But, you know, maybe that's where the problem was. So maybe we shouldn't, like I said, put all that blame on President Obama, but maybe it should be more on the deep state and what they were doing. Clearly, the fact is the deep state is there to overthrow Syria and they've been using ISIS from the beginning. 
Does Israel have a hand in that? Well, maybe we do have some sinister uh, government officials in the Israeli government as well that were part of it, whether it be turning the blind eye or giving aid or whatever the case may be. But in all cases, in all governments, both U.S. and in Israel's government as well, we have some good, honest people that are also in the government. At least I want to believe that that's the case, just like I want to believe that we have some good politicians in America. I know that there's the old joke is, if you see the politician's lips are moving, then he's lying. I realize that. I guess there's always that possibility. Uh, anyway, though, but let's have some kind of optimism that that's not always the case. But again, I, I applaud Russia for vetoing uh, this uh, U.S. draft resolution on the Syrian chemical probe. President Assad has not gassed his people. And we have had too many American experts, peace experts, that have come out and said this is nothing but propaganda and demonizing President Bashar al-Assad. And as I said in the video the other day, President Bashar al-Assad, I encourage you as well. We need to work together to bring peace in this region, if there's ever going to be peace. Uh, you just can't out help but wonder what's going to happen next. Also, Israel, uh, again, is now releasing uh, that, they're, that they are ready to cooperate with the Saudis to, uh, as it says here on the article, face Iran, is what the defense chief is saying there, face Iran. Uh, the Israeli government is now willing to share intelligence on Iran. That's very concerning to me. It lets me know that we are just one step closer to a military confrontation with Iran uh, and very disturbing news indeed. And I'm sure if the Israel gets involved with Iran, with whether it be with the Saudis or whoever, we're going to be dealing with Hezbollah, we're going to be dealing with Hamas and Gaza. Uh, it could even cause North Korea to go into an all-scale war. And, uh, and of course, Russia could end up being one of the major uh, wild cards, as it were, in this conflict, if this is the way it goes. Very troubling indeed, and something that uh, a lot of people are not considering, but I think this is why NATO has built up so much military around Russia, is hopefully they're hoping to contain Russia when the time comes that they take out some of Russia's allies there inside the Middle East, which would be Syria, Iran as well, and even in Lebanon, Hezbollah in, in Lebanon. So that is one of the reasons why we see this massive buildup of NATO troops all around uh, Russia, both on the west, even in the east. This is why the THAAD system was put inside of South Korea. Not the THAAD system was put there to protect Seoul from North Korea, but rather from Russia firing off nuclear weapons towards the mainland United States when they go to take down more of Russia's allies out in the Middle East there. This is for a global dominance. It is a land grab, and it is exactly what the deep state is doing. And this is something that I totally disagree with uh, as an American citizen, as a Jew Jewish believer in Yeshua, I am also in a disagreement that the Israeli government would get involved in this as well. Very troubling. One last bit of news I want to share with you guys. It kind of kind of gets me as well. Is on Twitter there. I pulled it up. Uh, Trump is set to pardon a turkey. You know, this gets me. Have you ever really thought of the irony of what they're saying every year when the president pardons two turkeys? Well, Trump's going to pardon two turkeys. President Obama did. President Bush. All the presidents, they always pardon a turkey. Well, what did the turkey do in the first place? What is his crime? What is his sin? What has he done against humanity that he would be imprisoned in the first place? Has anybody ever considered that? The turkey doesn't need pardoning. If anything, we're the ones that need to be pardoned. And I do appreciate, though, the fact that the president every year, as a tradition, allows a turkey to go free so he can live out the rest of his life without the fear of being killed. Maybe that'd be a good thing for all of us to do. Maybe this year, rather than eating the turkey, and I'm not against those that want to, if you want to eat the turkey, if that's what you do, I've ate many of them in my life as well, but maybe we should. If we can't adopt a turkey, and it probably is not legal to get the turkey and set it free, but that would be my desire, to see that they could go free this year rather than be killed. I'm Stephen Benoon with Israeli News Live. Thank you guys, those of you that have been helping us with my wife's uh, medical expenses there. Uh, she is fighting a very serious illness there, and it is a battle uh, still yet to come, and we are seeing... Uh, a little bit of positive results there, but it is a long way from being out of the woods. We want to thank you for your help in making that possible. 
your financial support, your prayers, and also your support of this ministry, this work that we do here at Israeli News Live, as well as the Noon Institute of Biblical Research. Uh, do pray for us. We are, we do have to return to Europe though in December. Uh, we are trying to work it out where the doctors in Europe will also keep the same treatment. We'll only be there a short period of time to come back here to the U.S. because the U.S. is really the better place for her to get the medical treatment that she needs. Thank you. God bless you. Visit our website, IsraeliNewsLive.org. And, uh, and if you'd like to donate towards this channel, you can also do that at IsraeliNewsLive.org or even here on our YouTube channel, Israeli News Live on YouTube, right above the subscribe button is a little donation link there. Thank you and God bless you. Shalom.